What's up, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome back to my raw reactions for the week of October the 26th. Uh, let's talk about Monday Night Raw and what happened. And yes, this time we are finally bringing you the CPU matches from WWE 2K16, which came out yesterday. So, that being said, what happened on Raw this week? We opened up with another authority segment because, you know, obviously we're opening Raw. I have to have a 20-minute opening talking segment. But this did establish what was going to happen in this show, and that's pretty good. Uh, so I'm not going to complain too much about the opening segment. It kind of did establish that, hey, there is a goal tonight, and the goal is the winners from Hell in the Cell all got put into singles matches, and those singles matches were going to determine who's going to be in the main event in a Fatal 4-Way, which is going to determine who wins the Fatal 4-Way is going to be the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. So, that being said, we started off with Roman Reigns versus Kofi Kingston, and if you'll notice throughout the night, the crowd was increasingly into all these matches because the matches had a purpose, and when wrestling matches have a purpose, the crowd's going to care more about them. So, Normally, you'd have Roman Reigns versus Kofi Kingston, and that'd be pretty much almost a squash match because it's Roman Reigns versus Kofi Kingston. But here, even though you knew that Kofi wasn't going to win this match, you still kind of could have those almost near falls. You could have him have a competitive match because it was going somewhere. You knew what the stakes were. Uh, so I thought they had a pretty good match. Um, and then that was followed up, uh, obviously, Roman won. That was followed up by this match, obviously one of the better matches of the evening, uh, Owens versus Cesaro, both guys who uh, I think are fantastic, and I'm always glad to see on Raw uh, on any given night, and uh, they had a fantastic match. Uh, a lot of the time, I'm not really, you know, that pleased with Cesaro losing clean, I think, you know, as much as they say that wins and losses don't matter, I think that in certain contexts, they kind of do, but certainly, you... They knew who they wanted to have in their final four for the main event, so they had to have Cesaro lose, which is unfortunate. But still, Cesaro looked pretty awesome, and these guys, uh, every every time that they fought thus far, have put on a pretty fantastic match. So uh, that was really good. Uh, we're still on this whole mystery train of who attacked Natalia, who apparently has been like Poochie and returned to her, her home planet. She's just been gone. That's kind of weird. Uh, so there was more backstage stuff, which led into a PCB versus Team Bella match. I was really hoping we'd be done with the six Diva tag matches, but obviously you got to fill a three-hour show at some point. So that was kind of like, yeah, this is still going to happen. And so a after the match, which by the way, Team, Be Team Bella won, Paige turned on Becky and turned on Charlotte. Now... Correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm pretty sure I'm not. Didn't Paige already turn on Becky and Charlotte like a month ago? And then was back with them for a few weeks doing the tag team stuff as usual? But then somebody mysteriously attacked Natalia, and now Paige actually turns on them like physically? Like what? Obviously this is the, the destruction of Team PCB, hopefully. Hopefully they won't just be tag teaming as usual next week. But, like, clearly, I've been calling for a direction in this whole Divas Revolution stuff for a while. And uh, if this is a direction, I am glad for that. Uh, I am i don't necessarily agree with things like, you know, Becky getting pinned clean by Nikki Bella. But, you know, she's a, I, she got pinned by a former, uh, a, a former uh, longest reigning Divas champion. So I guess I can't complain too much there. But shit. Anyway, uh, we get a backstage deal with Del Rio and Zeb. Uh, most unfortunate that they did, did not continue that very old thing, uh, the, the, the old online story where Zeb could not remember Renee Young's name. Uh, that was always hilarious, so I, I guess, you know, they're not, you know, they just didn't do that. But we have learned that Del Rio and uh, Zeb have formed a new country called Mex America, and they kind of had like a half and half flag for that. And the whole thing feels like a rib. Like, hey, Del Rio got fired legit because a guy made a racist joke, so now he's 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 being managed by a guy who uh, used to manage, you know, guys who were racist and sneaking across the border, all that stuff. 
Like, how bad is Jack's... How depressed is Jack Swagger right now that he's not involved in any of this? So, whether or not Mex America becomes an actual stable at some point with more guys in it, or if it's just Del Rio and Zeb, who knows? And as far as how long Zeb sticks around, who knows? Uh, driving around the people power uh, cart there. Anyway... The next match on the card was uh, Del Rio vs. Neville, uh, and obviously Del Rio won. I think it's cool that Del Rio has been winning uh, since, he, since he's been back by not using the cross arm breaker. That kind of makes him seem a bit more uh, unpredictable and dangerous. So that Well, you don't know what he's going to beat you with, but he's going to beat you. Uh, so, And I like that, that they had both the IC champ and the US champ in contention for you know, a spot to go after the world title because that, obviously, those belts should mean you're pretty good and you're important, not just, hey, you're a mid-card guy. So, enjoyed seeing that. Uh, and then after Del Rio won that match, uh, then... Was that it? No? I was not paying attention. That was, that was, that was not it. Uh, I'm, I'm liking some of the new animation stuff this year. It looks pretty good. Uh, next match was kind of pointless, and it was Sheamus, Barrett, Rusev, which is like Team Europe, versus, uh, Ryback and the Dudleys. Like, much like a lot of these six-man tag matches last week, that kind of had no purpose, served no purpose. I mean, obviously, this was the loser's bracket, all these guys lost at, uh, bridge that suplex. All these guys lost at the pay-per-view, so, you know, they kind of had a me oh, go have a match, and whatever. So the only thing significant here uh, was how goddamn happy Wade Barrett was after this match. <laughs> to have won a match, Wade Barrett was so happy. Uh, and that's always good to see. So after this, uh, we had a Bray Wyatt promo. And I have certainly had my issues in the past with Bray Wyatt promos. I think they'd be more effective if there were less of them. But when they're doing them almost once a week, sometimes twice a week, they kind of lose their purpose because he's not really saying anything. It's just like, well, blah, 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 Undertaker, blah, 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 soul, you know, whatever. So, that being said, is this match going to be over now? One, two, nope, not over yet. Okay, keep talking. Uh, speaking of which, we had the thing that should have happened at the pay-per-view, which is, that's gotta be Kane, comes out to avenge his brother. Remember, they are brothers. And then, obviously, uh, it was a trap, as Admiral Akbar would say. It's a trap! Uh, and, and here are the rest of the Wyatts to beat the crap out of Kane, because Kane's an old man. Uh, here is, uh, Cesaro doing the neutralizer. This should be the end of this match. Most likely. Uh, if he actually pins him here. And then we can go on to a different, uh, one, two. There you go. Always good to see C Cesaro winning, even if it's just in a fucking video game. So Kane gets kidnapped, he gets dragged into the back, they show him, like, Disappearing into the fog or some some hot garbage, uh, which why was it so foggy in the back of that arena? Like what the hell was going on there? It was kind of weird. Uh, now, if you recall, the last time that the Wyatts kidnapped Kane, he came back as Corporate Kane. That was like I'm pretty sure that, that that's how that went. So I am disappointed that they kidnapped the Undertaker and he has not come back as the Corporate Undertaker, as the Director of Operations Undertaker. Anyway. That would just, I would enjoy that. It not necessarily would make for a good show, but, you know, obviously, Taker's never not played a serious character. He's always been super serious Taker, biker Taker, big evil. Like, he's never been in more of a comedic role like Kane has done. And whether or not he would have the, the chops for it, I don't know. Um, anyway, that actually brings us to uh, this match, which is Big E versus Dolph Ziggler. Now, those of you who, they, so, the one thing that I love more than anything else, uh, in wrestling, when wrestling is good, is when they actually have continuity. So, it was a bummer that the commentary team did not mention that Big E used to hang out with Dolph Ziggler. It was Ziggler, AJ, and Big E for a while, uh, a couple of years ago. They were, they were known on the internet as Team Rocket, uh, and that was just not, not brought up at all. So, you know, I like when they bring up wrestlers' previous histories, uh, you know, when they're, uh, fighting against each other. But anyway, uh, Big E fought Ziggler in, in, in another qualifier, and 
at ringside was Tyler Breeze in his own little section with chairs and some array, eating grapes. He didn't like do anything in the match. He's kind of he, he wasn't on commentary. He just kind of sat there uh, as a distraction, I guess. Anyway, Dolph Ziggler wins because of course he does, and he moves on to the main event. Uh, they had their last uh, breast cancer segment of the month with Titus O'Neil, uh, and like where the hell has he been? Like him and like. Where is the rest of the tag division? It's just been the New Day and the Dudleys for a while now. Uh, there are other tag teams, you guys. What happened? Uh, we had a backstage segment with uh, The Miz, who's been playing the, this game all night. And then out comes Austin, and apparently Austin can magically make your voice disappear when, he, when, you, when, you, when you attempt to cut his catchphrase. Uh, now, whether or not they filmed that last week when he was actually there, or they flew him out for that one fucking thing, I don't know. Uh, but they were certainly pimping the game all night, as they do uh, whenever the game comes out uh, each and every year. Although, obviously, when the game comes out, they can't show too much from the game, because all of these outfits are outdated. Dolph Ziggler wears pants now. Big E has different colors, and, and so does Kofi. Like, there's so much stuff that, like, I couldn't even, like, if I wanted to give you the main event and show you to you in the game, I'd have to go and make Del Rio, because Del Rio just came back, obviously not in the game. I couldn't put in the match with... The Dudleys, because they, they they just came back. I you know, so that's that's a that's a matter for DLC, that's a matter for the my creation studio stuff in here that I you know haven't had time to get into yet because they came out yesterday. But that is what it is. Let's talk about the main event. Dolph Ziggler, Roman Reigns, Alberto Del Rio, Kevin Owens for the right to face Seth Rollins, I would assume at Survivor Series. They haven't actually said that yet, but I would assume that's what you're fighting for the number one contendership for. Obviously, we don't know what's going on with any kind of a traditional match at Survivor Series, and people were guessing, well, what if they're going to, um, if, if the Wyatts are going to kidnap Taker, wouldn't it be the four Wyatts versus Team Taker with Taker, Kane, Reigns, and uh, Ambrose? Clearly not, because Reigns won this match, and he's now the number one contender, so Reigns is going to fight uh, Rollins supposedly at Survivor Series, I don't know, like, they're, they're booking on that, it's not particularly clear yet, so I'm, I'm curious to see where they're going to take that, but this match was fantastic, all these guys just going at 100%, uh, this is, and, and what makes a great match, what, what, what makes a good match great, and what makes a great match better is how into it is the crowd. The crowd plays such a large part in wrestling that a lot of people don't don't actually realize. And because you gave such a simple setup, hey, these four guys are going to qualify, and then whoever qualifies is going to fight Rollins, then the crowd was into it. They were engaged over the course of a three-hour show, and obviously, anytime you keep someone's attention for three hours is a fucking feat in 2015. So, crowd was into it, Reigns wins, uh, obviously I don't particularly agree with Owens having to get pinned there, but it was a good final spot of the pop-up powerbomb and Superman punch, uh, stuff. That was awesome. Uh, so yeah. Hell of a match. Uh, these guys all busted their asses, and I'm happy to say, hey, Raw was great this week. Uh, after the match ended, we had a stare-down because they had since, since they had... Rollins on commentary, and so there was a little stare down there, there was no punches being thrown, but they kind of just, you know, kind of did a thing, and he did the thing, and, and so yeah, that's, that's going to be our story going forward. Now, obviously, there are some, some folks on the internet who are not particularly pleased because of what happened with Roman Reigns from, you know, earlier in the year, from the Rumble to Mania, where they were just like, no, this is Roman Reigns, blah, 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 and, and certainly, I can understand that frustration when they sent out Reigns in the opening segment to talk and you should not let him near a microphone. If you want to get him better at being on a microphone, let him do it at house shows because the crowd wants to like Reigns. They want to. And when he's being awesome and punching shit, that's great. When you let him talk, that no, it just doesn't. It all falls apart. So less talking, more punching, and I think uh, certainly folks could get behind Reigns, if they're going to get the belt off Rollins at the next pay-per-view, I don't, you know, know if they're actually going to go with that, and they're going to actually pull the trigger on Reigns just yet, and if we've gotten past our, you know, annoyance at him being the golden boy, 
and the Chosen One, etc., etc. So, that was my thought on Raw. Uh, I enjoyed Raw, and I'm always glad to have enjoyed Raw. Uh, and because when wrestling is good, it's fucking great. But so many weeks, they just don't... They, they're on a fucking treadmill, and then it's not going anywhere. And that's just frustrating. So... That being said, it's my Raw Reactions for uh, October the 26th. I am your host, Attack Slug. Look forward to plenty more 2K16 videos right here on this particular channel. And I will see you next time right here on this channel. And Biggie wins. And I'm out.